Hello, Garnet Leary here. Today's video is by request, and I will be comparing the same model camera, both a stock version and a modified version for astrophotography. And we'll go over the pros and cons of making the modification. So here you can see the two Canon 1000Ds and an iOptron Skyguider Pro, which I'll use to get the three minute exposures for each shot. Today is really clear, it's beautiful outside. This image is the RGB unmodded stock camera. Right out of the camera, this is what it looks like and this is the modified. And as you would expect, it's, it's got a reddish tint to it, but you can see a whole lot more nebulosity in this photo. Here they are side by side. The flame's really bright, but the horse head, that's, that's the giveaway there. And like I said, these, neither one of these are modified. They're taken straight from the camera. No color balancing or anything like that. All the settings were the same. In the uh, stock camera, you can see the histogram there. And again, this is directly out of the camera. On the modded, you'll see that the red channel is slightly advanced, and that's to be expected. You can see a little bit of Barnard's loop. And these are just single exposures, so they're going to be really grainy and, and not very easy on the eyes. Um, on the top here, you can see the stock. On the bottom is the modified camera. There's quite a bit of difference. Uh, a lot more noise in the top one because it had to be pushed a little bit further. And this is back to the uh, unmodified. And now we're looking at the modified camera. And as again, notice uh, Barnard's loop and particularly the uh, flame nebula. And here uh, I used a dehaze effect off of each one only just to show the nebulosity. And hydrogen alpha is seven nanometers, really hard to focus. So if you're just starting out, you might want to work with 12. This is a grayscale version of just the modified camera. And we're gonna pan over to the Optolong HA7 nanometer. And wow, look at that. That's a single exposure, guys. So uh, yeah, that low pass filter that's in your camera is, is costing you a lot of time, a lot of exposure time. I mean, that's, that's pretty amazing, uh, especially when you go narrow band on full spectrum. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons of making this jump to uh, have your camera modified. Okay, the first and most obvious pro is the camera's hydrogen alpha response. Every stock camera, except for the Astro versions of specific models, come with a type of low pass filter in them. And it's designed to cut down on red eye and that sort of thing. But unfortunately, it exists on the same wavelength of light that the uh, hydrogen alpha emission does. And to answer the question, the hydrogen atom is the most abundant atom in the universe. And there are excited hydrogen atoms everywhere that there's emission nebula and that sort of thing. So really important, full spectrum. Another pro of modding your camera is ultraviolet and infrared photography. By taking out the low pass filter of your camera, you're opening the door for two other new sets of photography. With specialized filters on a full spectrum camera, you can, you can also do these two things. So that's a bonus for, for modding your camera. So here's the part where, I, in no particular order, I'm just gonna give you some downsides to the whole thing. Um, first being, if you are a photographer and you are just getting started in astrophotography, let's say you have one camera, 
Um, making that jump and modifying that camera is, is a big step because your white balance will be totally off. And from then on, you're gonna have to shoot with a gray card. It's a real pain. Now, um, I believe it's Spencer's camera. They make a spe specialized filter just for that that goes in front of the lens and um, it's designed to work like the low pass filter, but you put it in front of the lens so you can retain normal white balance. There's also ways to, uh, to trick the camera by manually adjusting your white balance settings. Um, I've never really got into that too much, but just know that the white balance is, is gonna be gone. Another negative is, let's say you do it yourself and you go with the naked sensor mod. And what that is, is you've removed the low pass filter, but you haven't replaced it with anything. So what happens here is you lose your autofocus function in a lot of lenses because you've taken a piece of glass out of the optical train, if that makes any sense. Um, it's not, the light's really not converging at the same point. So the, the camera's computer and all can't really make heads or tails of it. So autofocus is gonna be an issue with the naked sensor modification. Now with a full spectrum modification, which is adding the uh, clear glass back in place of it, I think you can get them for like 50 or $60, but um, it's an option you have. That, that doesn't really cost you anything on autofocus, but your white balance will still be a problem. And obviously, uh, another issue is warranty. Let's say it's a relatively new camera that you decide to do this to, then the minute you go inside of it, you can just cancel your warranty out. So those are all potential bad things that's involved with it. Um, and again, if you're into photography as a whole, then that camera is going to be really difficult to use in daytime and that sort of thing because of that uh, red shift. So I'll close the video with just a few of my personal thoughts on the uh, issue of modification. Um, astrophotography is it's a beautiful connection with your universe. It's an amazing hobby. It's something that uh, once you get into you, it just takes hold of you. Um, if you really love DSLR cameras and you're not really interested in a dedicated astro camera, then you probably should modify your camera. If you're into astrophotography, unfortunately, I, I say it's necessary. Again, if you, uh, you decide to do it, um, good luck and all the best to you. It's an amazing journey, and I wish you nothing but clear skies. Thanks for watching.